Hello, this is Adam and this is my final video walkthrough for the Marketplace page. So as you can see, I have this file opened right in front of me in Figma. Uh, the plan for this video is to just quickly go uh, through each of the page uh, in the file, um, mention all of the things worth mentioning or just things that you might miss, um, and then include a prototype or two. Uh, but before we dive into the marketplace page itself, let me just quickly mention that uh, there are quite a few dependencies here that you might want to uh, take care of first before uh, implementing this page. Uh, the most important one would be um, the, the, the new uh, section components. This would be the rework and layout clear foundation for section components in Atlas. So in Figma, you will find it in the web components um, file, of course. All of the links are provided in this issue. Um, and because sections are used quite heavily throughout the new marketplace page, this is something you definitely want to make sure is implemented fully before starting uh, implementing the marketplace page. Now, one thing I want to uh, mention is that, well, in case this part looks a bit scary, uh, just to, um, <laughs> just to, I, I just wanted to reassure you, these are just recent components that we have created to be mostly used in Figma. So this is not something you, you need to necessarily worry about. Uh, the real, you know, stuff that will uh, make it into the implementation is just this thing right here. And um, because the documentation for new sections is, is quite extensive and it features, um, you know, handling all of the, you know, various edge cases and it, you know, covers the mechanisms for, you know, tabs and, uh, you know, what sort of elements do we want to, for example, display on each and every tab or, uh, you know, things as things such as what to do if, you know, there is not enough uh, horizontal space to fit everything inside or how does the search work. Um, or there is also this whole, you know, section about filters and how do filters works, uh, filters work, uh, both on desktop, uh, as well as on, um, mobile. Uh, I will just not be repeating and I have not been repeating, uh, this documentation in the marketplace page file. So in case you go over to user stories and you, you know, start thinking, well, this doesn't, you know, so it, it looks like there are a few user stories missing. This is because uh, the majority of documentation that you would have normally look for in the file over here can be now found in the web components file. And hopefully once, you know, sections are implemented, there is no longer a need for designers to, you know, spend time documenting the same things over and over again. And also, you know, having developers implementing also the same, the same things over and over again. So, uh, you know, when in doubt or um, something is not clear from the, for example, the uh, responsiveness, you know, uh, designs or just screens for different uh, viewport sizes, uh, or if it is unclear to you how to handle a certain, you know, filtering case, just make sure to uh, head over to the section header documentation if this hasn't been implemented yet. Also, one more very important dependency uh, because of you know the, um, the the CRT tab of the marketplace page would be of course tables. So tables is also something you want to make sure is implemented. Um, I'm bringing up tables because let me quickly find this. Um, because in the, um, for example, in the tab uh, for the creator tokens in the marketplace, there is this table which we'll get back into in a second, and it comes with sorting, which is uh, which can be you know with with columns based sorting, and uh, the logic for that has been also uh, documented in the web components file, specifically in the cell content uh, component. Uh, and this is because that's that's where the this component lives. So header cell content, and ultimately that is the component that innate that allows user uh, users to interact with sorting. And because of that, 
you will find uh, the documentation for sorting and how it works and what you can expect a designer. So me in this case to provide in the documentation of the file itself uh, and all other things that you might be interested in. And uh, not to worry, you don't need to, you know, uh, remember all of this stuff. I, uh, I, I try to include links to uh, documentation in web components wherever it was needed. So, and I'm, I'm sure I have included uh, a documentation or, or a link to this documentation somewhere, somewhere within these files where, where it made sense uh, for this link to be included. So yeah, that's it for this a bit, uh, probably a bit too long intro, but yeah, dependencies are very important, especially since there are so many of them with this ticket. Um, so assuming these are all taken care of at this point, let us begin by just quickly going through uh, the marketplace page and its structure and um, and let's just see what's going on here. So uh, the first thing worth pointing, and I will actually start by, I, I'll do this in this functional breakdown section of the, of the file in the designs page. And this is where uh, I am leaving some notes that just did not really fit into any user story, but they do refer to certain, you know, mechanics or, or logic uh, behind uh, various parts of the ta of, of the page. So yeah, uh, let's let's get going. So the marketplace page begins by two prominent tabs. So the first one is for video NFTs, and the second one is for creator tokens. This is where you, as a, a content viewer, can explore and discover. Uh, interesting investment opportunities uh, both for NFTs and creator tokens. Now creator tokens and NFTs as you can see are very clearly separated and the video NFTs is the tab that should be enabled uh, and active by default when you uh, reach the marketplace uh, page here. So um, going uh, down what we have here at the very uh, top is this prominent carousel uh, which features a uh, you know preview 30 seconds uh, 30 second preview of video nfts that have been uh featured by the uh, gateway uh, operator and uh, all of the featured nfts can be found in the section below in the in the featured section and the carousel here is just uh it's basically the same content but over here we do actually load um the videos themselves so that you can you know get a taste of what it is um now when it comes to all the details of uh, you know, uh, how does it work and, you know, pausing and the animation and what you need to click or maybe click and grab or just, you know, um, swipe with your finger. Things along those lines, again, have been documented on the component level because uh, what it is over here, this is a component called uh, Car Marketplace Carousel Cart. And because it is a component over here, I am making sure to leave a link to a documentation for this component. And this is where you can find out information about things such as, yeah, the interaction, uh, you know, how we can navigate through the carousel, uh, how does the countdown works, uh, and just all other details, which I will not repeat because after all, I did spend time uh, documenting those over here. And, um, one thing you might want to uh, watch out for or just, you know, be aware of is, oh yeah, is uh, an interactive Figma prototype that I have included for this carousel here, just to make it a little bit easier for you to uh, get a feeling of um, the expected implementation outcome. Now, of course, this should be linked and I will make sure it will <laughs> after recording this video. But uh, let me open up the prototype really quickly here so that uh, you can see, just, you know, you, you, you can make sure that you are seeing the same thing on your side. Okay, so that is how the uh, prototype works. So, and that's how you can see, you can, that, that's the opportunity for you as an uh, engineer to, uh, you know, notice uh, little details such as, you know, this, uh, this wrapper being uh, just, you know, elevated uh, or just moved to top when hovering. 
or you can catch details such as you know this card or this card being you know subtly um you know going into the center of the screen upon hovering uh this is also well uh, you know a prototype also allows you to uh get a feeling of how should you know clicking holding and dragging feel to control the carousel and and yeah that's it so just make sure to check out this uh prototype Again, a link for this will be in the uh, in the documentation for the marketplace carousel. Okay, getting back to the marketplace. Uh, okay, so we have the carousel, which we have already established. It's just the content from from this section, the featured uh, NFTs, which are created by the gateway operator. Then we have this how to get featured banner, which has a user story included to it, uh, into it, and we will uh, get to that in a second. Then we have this top selling channels uh, section, uh, you know, nothing fancy, just a table. Uh, make sure to remember about, you know, all of the components that are nested inside here, right? So of course, assuming I'm assuming that the table component is implemented at this point and that we also have implemented uh, all, sor all sorts of different uh, components for for uh, contents of our cells. And this over here, this is actually a component that lives in our web components main library. Uh, it is called channel cell content. Um, and I'm bringing this up because this component comes with, you know, for example, those uh, icons for verified or a CRT, uh, depending if, you know, a channel has been verified and if there is a creator token associated with the channel. Um, when implementing this section, be sure to check out uh, user stories uh, for um, more guidelines and, and documentation for handling, you know, edge cases such as uh, not having uh, 10 uh, channels to fill out the space. What should we do? Or what should we do if there is no data for a specific uh, time period, uh, which can be basically, which can be, by the way, controlled over here using this new component, which should also be implemented by now. And the component is called toggle button group. Uh, okay, cool. Let's uh, move on and then we finally reach into this last section all nfts um mm, yeah and i i guess that's uh, fairly straightforward this section is very similar to how the current marketplace looks like um what we have here is just a grid of nfts sorted by you know the newest and i'm referring to the date of minted not the date of video upload and um all of the order yeah, and, 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 you know, things uh, such as, you know, filtering, again, make sure to check out user stories to uh, have a chance to see what is behind each and every uh, filter button that we have over here. Oh, and by the way, this component, this is now, this is also a new component. It's called a filter button and it should be also implemented uh, by this time. Um, or oh, oh, by the time you, you're watching this video, hopefully. Um, so yeah, in the user stories, you will also find documentation for things such as, you know, uh, what to do when we are, you know, reloading or fetching the data again uh, for the, to, uh, once the new filtering has been applied. Um, then again, you have a chance to just see, you know, the contents of each filter uh, box. And you will also uh, find documentation for dealing with uh, no results whatsoever. So these are the things that you might find in the uh, all NFTs um, section. Okay, let's move on. Uh, the next page here is, uh, oh yeah, it's, um, it's a visualization of an edge case. So it might be uh, it might be ca uh, a case uh, that we don't have uh, that that we have two or less um, NFTs in the featured section. And as you can see, the carousel by default it assumes we have at least three uh, three items to be displayed here. But if there are only two NFTs, then you know we would need to do something else. And here is where I describe the solution for that. And finally, and this is an important part, 
uh, in this last screen, in this uh, functional breakdown section, you will find ma uh, me mentioning about this sticky header, which should be basic and I'm um, um, mentioning where, when should it um, be displayed and what should be the contents of that sticky header. But basically this should be, uh, the sticky header should be triggered uh, or should appear at the top once I scroll past this point, right? Once I uh, once I don't see this anymore. Uh, and this is just a way for me, a very convenient way for me as a user to still be able to quickly uh, either just take a look at the current filtering that I have applied, perhaps change sorting or apply a different filtering. And this is because this section from now on is scrolled continuously. We have this infinite scroll mechanism. That's the idea also mentioned over here. Um, okay, let's take a look at the creator tokens tab. Uh, as you can see, you know, it starts uh, with using the same component, uh, but this time rather than, you know, showing video NFTs, we need to show something else, right? After all, these are creator tokens. What video can we show for creator tokens? Well, actually, we have this idea of a uh, video token trailer, I believe that's the name. Um, and this is uh, an opportunity for me as a, a channel owner to provide a video uh, for for my creator token, a video in which I'm trying to um, invite a potential uh, investors into, you know, buying or investing into my creator tokens. So, uh, you know, to, providing this video trailer is optional. So this section here should be basically, uh, should, should basically list creator tokens, which are mentioned in the two next sections, but should be all, only limited to the tokens that actually come with a video trailer. Uh, and again, you can find out more about the things that I'm saying right now from the documentation here on the left hand side. Uh, featured liquid tokens and featured token sales, a new component uh, can be found here. The component is called CRT card. And for now, I am uh, I'm treating this as a local component, a component that is local to this marketplace page. Um, however, however, when implementing this component, be sure to check out the NFT tile implementation because I feel they share a lot of, uh, they, they have a lot of similar, there are a lot of similarities between these two components. Um, yeah, the documentation uh, for things such as, you know, um, dealing with the timer or what this progress bar represents when it is available, of course. And uh, the CRT card component is another component for which I included a prototype. So be sure to check this out. I will include a link in the documentation to this very prototype. This is where you can, for example, um, see, you know, this zoom in effect on the background here uh, when hovering on the CRT card component. Uh, getting back to the uh, functional breakdown. Right, we have featured liquid tokens and featured token sales. So the idea here is that as a gateway operator, I can specify a list of creator tokens that I want to be featured on the marketplace page. And depending on their sales status, and this can be either AMM, which uh, is communicated as on market to viewers, or creator sale, which is communicated like this to viewers, uh, these creator tokens would be uh, later grouped into these two buckets. So uh, the AMM uh, creator tokens would fall in this section, featured liquid tokens, and uh, then the tokens which are on a creator sale uh, would land in the second uh, category, so featured token sales. And ideally, this happens automatically so that I, as a gateway operator, I only, you know, specify a list of, you know, creator tokens and that's it. And this, uh, th this happens automatically, basically. Um, Moving on, we have the top selling channels with a token section. Basically, um, you know, it ended up looking very, very similarly to the top selling channels section. The main difference being the addition of this last part with a token. So basically, 
we are getting a list of you know channels with uh, the highest sales volume and we are ranking them uh, within a predefined uh, period of time so the, the so the the, uh, the income or the sales volume of course should be uh, set uh, uh, or calculated within the selected period of time and the only difference between this and the uh, the same section in the video NFTs tab is that here we are only focusing on the channels that actually do have a creator token. Um, and then we finally arrive at this last section, uh, which is again, which is similarly to the all NFTs. It's all called all creator tokens. And from now on, we have this infinite scroll mechanism so that you can scroll and scroll and scroll. And uh, because of that, we also have this... Um, I mean, the, 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 the header of the section component is should also appear in the sticky form, uh, as I mentioned here. Uh, I did not, you know, duplicate this documentation for the um, for the creator tokens tab, just not to end up having too many, uh, too, too much documentation for you to go through. So just for uh, simplicity's sake, I am just mentioning this in the video that please be aware the creator tokens um i mean that this this uh, header should be uh should appear um at the top of my viewport when i scroll you know past that point and um similarly as with the all crts uh section i'm sorry all nft section if you want to you know um see the contents of the filters here or dealing with you know various edge cases uh just head over to user stories and over there, you will find this, this the user story uh, called, as a content viewer, I want to filter all CRTs. So yeah, that's the opportunity for you to, you know, see the the exact list of checkboxes or radio buttons or order controls that might go into specific filters. And also, this is where you can find a copy for an empty fallback component, which should be displayed if uh, there are no results for my filtering. Um, and that is uh, that is it actually right. Uh, perhaps this is a good moment for us to quickly uh, go over this uh, last user story because it seems like I have covered all of them except for this one. So yeah, how to get featured is a banner that is displayed conditionally, and the conditions for displaying that have been uh, outlined uh, over here in the documentation. Uh, what can you do as a channel owner who sees this um, banner? You can of course click submit your video NFT to be featured because basically the idea behind this banner is to provide uh, it's just you know to in incentivize you as a channel owner to you know send us uh, your content so that you know it is a little bit easier to do this manual creation uh, so in order to do that you click on the submit your video NFT to be featured text button and this is what happens next you get this uh, interesting looking dialogue component and uh, the paste in which you can just basically paste a link to your video NFT. And you're also informed that this should be an NFT that is either on sale right now or it is on an upcoming sale at the time of you, you know, submitting this. And the paste your link here field should be auto-populated. There is this area here and you can see what it does in this next step. So now that I have pasted a link to a video, inside I get a preview of what this video is. And what this preview is, is just, you know, video, a viewer video tile component, and that's it. Um, and then after I uh, hit submit video, that's the snack bar that I get. Um, and of course, since this is a form, I provided uh, some uh, messages uh, for uh, for the valid for different you know uh, uh, validation cases. So in case you don't provide a link at all, that's what you get. Uh, you might provide something else instead of a link. We need to respond to that as well. Um, you might try to be sneaky and provide a link to a video that is not an NFT, and we should most definitely be prepared for that. And finally, you might also provide a video for an NFT which is just not on sale. And we should not allow that, I believe, too. So if you'll try to do that, that's what you should get after uh, clicking the submit video uh, button. Right, 
um that's it i believe um yeah just make sure to uh check out the local components and the documentation for those as well but other than this that's the marketplace um yeah thank you i hope you will have a good time implementing this ah, fingers crossed <laughs> goodbye